Intersectionality is the connection between the different identities that make up a person. This can include class identity, gender identity, male, female, trans, etc. It could also be more institutional, such as education or religious identity. It could also include racial identity. And finally, it could also be who you love or your sexuality. It is important to consider how together all these identities affect a person's privilege or invisible package of unearned advantages or oppression, which is discrimination based on real or perceived differences. How do all of these things affect students at UD? We asked a few students, first by asking them to name some of their identities. I'm a straight female. I'm Indian American. I'm straight. I am female in the traditional sense. I check Caucasian <laughs> and I identify as ethnically Jewish in some circumstances, but heterosexual. My religious identity is atheism. I'm a male. Um, white. Straight. Roman Catholic. I identify as female. I identify as male. I'm a woman. Caucasian? Is that a racial identity? Mm. Like white? Yeah, I'm white. <laughs> I'm white. <laughs> um, hetero. Straight. I'm straight. I am Roman Catholic. I don't identify with any religion. I don't identify with any religion. Uh, white. I believe that there's no real um, standards for me. I believe that there is some because of the fact that I'm white male, but I believe that success is kind of easier to be attained due to the fact that I don't believe that there's any uh, disadvantages to my race. Growing up with an older brother, I think there were definitely different expectations between the two of us. So he was doing more of like specific example, like he was mowing the lawn while I was inside doing types of cleaning just because um, like looking at it now, it probably had a lot to do with our gender roles and such. And then as you get into college, you see kind of how that can manifest, like maybe in group projects. No, not really. Um, as a white male, I'm very privileged, obviously, just because of my gender and race. Um, and um, I also grew up in a suburban area and went to Catholic school, so like always been economically uh, stable and such, so yeah, I've been very privileged. I don't think I experienced any specific privilege because of these identities. I, I guess I like to sometimes consider being a woman as a privilege, as an advantage, because uh, you're not expected to be very strong in every circumstance. Uh, and that can be helpful in business settings and social settings. The fact that you are expected to be kind to other people can be an advantage. Um, I definitely have, just because um, because of my skin color. Um, I have been, um, let's just say, racially harassed sometimes because the whole stigma of, you know, if you have brown skin, you're a terrorist, that has come into play. I work at a supermarket back at home and I applied for like a promotion. I mean, in supermarket terms, like being the customer service representative is kind of like a big deal in the supermarket world. But um, usually CSRs are guys and I tried to do it. And usually because I'm a girl, people think I'm gonna be oversensitive to like the pressures that the job brings on. but. Definitely, like someone else got the job over me and it was a boy, so. Well, my privilege is just, um, especially my like sexuality, like Rebecca was kind of saying, just allow me to kind of walk around campus without being judged by others. I think mainly because UD is mainly a Caucasian school, it does affect me because there's not many people of color on this campus. So, um, you know, being a minority, you know, it's just sometimes you stick out a lot and sometimes you may be on the hurting end of like a racial joke or a racial attack. I try to empathize of what it may feel like to be a student of color walking around campus um, with in a an entire campus of white people pretty much so just thinking about how that can um, 
playing to my day to day life and also being involved in organizations that really promote diversity. So um, maybe the leaders of organizations represent the diversity, not that we have on campus, but the diversity we want on campus. And so when I'm in those leadership positions, um, and I'm obviously white, so I try to use my privilege to sit back and listen to those who are maybe students of color or um, those in the LGBTQ plus community and stuff like that to, to learn from them rather than having to be the white one talking all the time.